All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's see. I need to get a couple things set up here. I uh, just need chatty. And... No, that's not what I wanted. There's chatty. Okay, and stream labels should update things. All right, I missed last week. I was on vacation in Hawaii, which was nice, although the water was a little bit cold. But can't complain too much. Uh, should have worn my Hawaiian shirt today, but uh, it's actually not unpacked. All right, so today. We are going to be looking at some open source stuff on GitHub. I have a NuGet package for guard clauses, and it's hosted here on our Dallas slash guard clauses. I've got some outstanding fixes that have been made that I haven't actually made an update to um, the NuGet package. So version 1.2.8 is the latest, and we want that to be updated to 1.2.9, I believe. Let's see. Let me verify that. Actually, no, I'm wrong. This one's all good to go. This one updates automatically. The, uh, the other one, SmartEnum, is the one I need to play with today. So let's look at that one. Sorry. All right, so this one has some issues, and it's on 1.0.6, and we need to get it up to 1.0.7, because it hasn't been updated in a while. So let me just pull that one over here. All right, so Smart Enum we're going to update, uh, and then this uh, Clean Architecture one has about 19 issues, uh, including a question here about application services, but a bunch of other stuff here that uh, we're going to try and work through and talk about uh, today. So... Let's see, we got Steven Kramers here. Hi, Steven. Good seeing you again. And everything else looks good to go. So let's go ahead and get started now that I'm on the right project. Um, so the first thing I need to do is pop over here and make sure I've got Smart Enum pulled down, which doesn't look like I do. So we'll go ahead and do that. Got that. All right, now let's just open that up and take a look at it. And here's where I should have my uh, code editor, editor config file set up that we were just talking about earlier today, Stephen. Um, all right, so let's build this. Make sure it's all good. All right, now the latest change that we discussed for this project is under this issue here, which was issue 42, which basically said that we want to be able to do a smart enum uh, that could be a string. We had a struct restriction on it that was keeping that from happening. We got rid of that 29 days ago, but we haven't actually pushed that change. Um, to NuGet.org. So if we go out to, well, let's just use the link from the homepage. If we go to the NuGet page for this, uh, it was last updated two months ago. Um, so we need to get a 1.07 out there that has this update. Now, I don't have this one set up in Azure Pipelines yet to automatically uh, publish to NuGet. That's on my backlog to get done. Uh, but I do have a NuGet.txt checklist that I use. Uh, and so I'm going to use the checklist for this. I'm going to do the Azure Pipelines step separately, maybe later today. But um, let's just get this done first. So, do 
we'll just open this up and we want to do from let's see get into the smart enum folder go into source and Pop these across. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I expect somebody would have told me by now if they weren't. Alright, so in the source folder, I've got a bunch of different things. And the other problem that I've got going on with this particular NuGet package is that uh, these other things need to probably be their own NuGet packages. But I don't have that worked out yet either. So I will figure that out as well. It's on the backlog. For now, I think I just need smart enum all by itself, is what I recall. Well, that's nice. Alright, so we're in here. It's got the CS project that I want. Um, I should probably add some release notes to that CS project file, so let's jump back to Visual Studio for a moment. Edit this CS project from there. And under package, I can say I want it to be the next version, which I believe is correct. Let's go back out to that. Yeah, Windows 6 was the last one. Good. So that should be Windows 7. And what do we do? Remove struct. Restriction, allow string values. And that's that to that. Everything's 1.07, everything looks good. We'll save that. Come back out here. Uh, we can do a .NET build. That's all still good. And if we look at our checklist we can do .NET pack release slash p colon version 107 which I'm not sure no that was right what's the error Demo spilled error property is not valid .NET pack Dash C release. I capitalized that, but that shouldn't matter, should it? Slash P colon version one dot oh dot whatever. Right, why are you giving me an error? Let's build switch version one dot oh dot seven. Oh, because it's not a colon, it's an equal. Got it. Okay, now it's not happy. Do I have to do a release build first? Probably. So let's do that. I should be able to do the whole pack process from Visual Studio, but that's not what my checklist tells me to do. So let's try that. Pack. There it is. There's my 107. Alright. So either way it works. So then I can do this push. Now I need this key. And to get that key I need to go out to nuget.org and log in. So I'll do that over here on the other monitor. actually worked. I could sign in. Go to API keys and manage these API keys. And 
This is for smart enum. I don't have a smart enum specific key, so I'll just create a new one for that. And it'll work for that package only. And I'll create that key. And then it'll let me copy that key. And now I can come in back over here and do that command. So do dot net nuget push dub 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 nuget dot org. Put the key in there. We'll just pull this. Hmm. I'm remote desktoped into this machine and I can't uh, pull that over anywhere easily. So, we'll just do this. And then, what's the name of that? Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. That's too bad. We'll just delete all that. Gotta get to the right folder first. So we want to CD bin, CD release. Now we're in the right place. Our Dallas dot smart enum. All right. Dot net. You get push dash s. All right. That's that. Now we paste the key and do that. Hit enter. And like I showed you the key anyway. Fine. I'll just kill that key. So we did that and I will delete that key. Boom. So ha, you can see the key but it doesn't matter. Uh okay, package was pushed. Good to go. And if we come back here and refresh, it probably won't show it yet. But on my other screen. If I go to look at all these packages, yeah, it shows me 107 is in validating status, which only I can see. But soon it'll show up. All right, so that's the first thing I wanted to get done. Done. Anybody have any questions on that? Nope. All right, so I did update some things. Um, that should go into GitHub. So let's go back to the root. See what we have. Pretty much just the project file. So we'll add everything. Updated NuGet details in project file for 1.0.7 version. All right. That seems to have worked. If I come back out here, my change is there. That should kick off a new build on the Azure pipeline. Okay. Um, let's go look at how hard it would be to add the Azure pipeline stuff that I need to do that automatically. So here is my Azure pipeline for Smart Enum. Over here in guard clauses, let's pull this over, put it side by side. That's interesting. All right, there, good enough. So Azure Pipeline, Azure Pipeline. And uh, case on here was nice enough to set this up for me for uh, guard clauses and I could probably get him to do it for smart enum as well. Is he on here right now? Doesn't seem to be. Hey Rambling Geek, Ancient Coder, THL Next. I'm not sure how to pronounce that any differently. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Alright, so looking at the two the, the difference here is, um, well, first off, this one has multiple branches, right? So this will do master as well as refs tag star. Uh, and PR is set up for master. Uh, hey, SMAB UK. 
So then on here, um, obviously my, my Smart Enum one is pretty basic. This is really just the default build that you get. I think the only change I made was to make it use VS uh, on Windows. Uh, and that was because I have a version of it that works with fullframework.net. So you can't just build that on, on anything. It has to be built on Windows. All right, I am running tests in both cases. Um, this one's doing explicitly a restore. Not sure that's necessary because the build should do that anyway. But that's one difference between the two. And then it does a build with an artifact staging directory as its output, uh, which is going to get used later on down here when we do the copy files and publishing. And then somewhere there's a key that's used to publish this to nuget.org. Uh, which isn't obviously the key is not in this file. It's set up on on the Azure pipeline side of things So you've got to modify this and that Now I think I can pretty much take this whole thing as is and Copy it over. There's nothing on here that's specific to the guard clauses project that I can see In which case everything should work except that the publishing won't work until I put that key where it needs to go um, so let's look at that. So we'll look at guard clauses, and if we click on Azure Pipeline, we can see how things are set up in here. There's the artifacts drop. You can look at the different builds. Uh, there's Kason's update there. But somewhere in here also are some details like wherever that key gets stored. And that's what I need to find. Probably I need to sign in to get to that. Might be that one. Uh, sure. Alright, so that seems to have worked. So I'm in. Now the question remains, where would I find special settings? There's different things there. No. That's not guard clauses specific. So somewhere in this project, probably related to the pipelines, there's got to be a place where you store settings for this. Hey, Ancient Coder. Uh, oh, Stephen Kramer's helping me out. Published Nougat should be in the release pipeline, not the YAML. Yes, that's true. It'll be in the variables on your release pipeline definition. Ancient Coder, yes, I'm on a treadmill at the moment until I get tired or it's distracting me. Alright, so you're saying that this release here which is tagged with going to nougat.org. Somehow I can edit this thing. And this task or job should have a variable. And that variable should have... Nope. Not that. Yeah, I clicked at it. I'm in here. There's no variables. There's no variable groups. There's no anything here. Um, options, history, org settings, keep retained artifacts, no. Right, okay, so here's where he added it. Dun, dun, dun. Not there. So this is definitely the task. Yeah, this is the task to do the NuGet.org thing, I believe. NuGet push. So maybe it's a variable in here somewhere. Is 
the new user service that will be in the organization settings. Okay. So this NuGet connection is probably what it's got the key, right? So if I manage this NuGet connection, there's a service connection, NuGet connection. Okay, so maybe I can use that same NuGet connection as long as it's using a key that works for Smart Enum. Okay. All right, so let's see. Under Pipeline, under Builds, I've got the standard build, which is the YAML file. And we've got Releases, which is this thing here, just the NuGet.org thing. So for me to do the same thing on Azure for Smart Enum, first thing I think I want to do is copy the YAML stuff. So let's make the YAML files match, and that's easy enough. So we'll go here, we'll go here, we'll look at the raw file, Control A, Control C, come over here, edit this one. Just change it right in place. It's not going to work initially, but updating to support automatic NuGet publication and commit. All right, so there's that. That's going to kick off a build, which probably won't work um, because. I don't know, maybe it will work, but we'll see. Display name, publish, publish build artifacts is the task, path to publish. Yeah, I'm not, I don't see anything here that ne won't necessarily work. It just won't actually do the build process. All right, so let's go to its Azure pipeline. And so under builds, here's this, that one's running. Under releases, I don't have any, so I want to create a new release pipeline. And now we'll go and make this uh, side by side again with this one. And this is a NuGet pipeline I want. Right? Under builds, oh no, under releases, edit this thing. I want to take my artifacts and push to NuGet.org. How is there not a NuGet.org publication template to start with? That's just silly. Is that an example of one of the things you have to pay money for to get access to? Probably. Alright, so... And these pipelines, this build artifact thing, it doesn't have any type of uh, way to serialize it, right? I can't just copy paste this whole thing as, as some XML or something, can I? No template needed, right? Stage name. This is published to NuGet.org. Okay, great. Pipeline. All right, let me hide that so I can see it. Okay. So this looks a lot like this. I want to add an artifact. Dallas guard clauses. It's a build artifact. Must be that. Okay, let's add that. And task is published to there. Great. Has zero tasks. Let's add a task. So my one task is NuGet push. So publish NuGet, agent job. Store. We get 
push, command, there's push, really? See previous ones. I want to edit the one I'm on. There we go. Alright, so over here, push dollar set. Let's just copy this, paste it here. So that one's working to an external NuGet server. And I want this to be my NuGet connection, which apparently I don't have. So I create a new NuGet connection. Connection name is NuGet connection. Feed URL is the same thing that I've been publishing to, I think. YAML's coming. Yeah, that would be nice if they YAMLize this whole thing. Uh, that's not what I want. The NuGet URL that I want, I know is here. That's what I've been using. And then the API key, the all important API key. So I need to go back to my other screen. And uh, you know, the other thing I can do to do privacy things is I can stop sharing my screen during streaming. That would be a smarter way to do it take advantage of that this time. Alright, so API keys, let's create a new one. Guard clauses, this is smart enum. So smart enum pipeline. The ability to push things. Smart enum. Create the key. Copy the key. Go into OBS, paste the key. Oh, it's all start anyway. Oh, oh, look at that. They're so smart. So now you can't see it. So, okay. So now I've got that. And that might be all I need to do. Um, hmm. Oh, look, there's a view YAML option here. It's interesting. We'll skip that because it'll probably show me the key. Okay, so how do I save this thing? Save it. Okay. Alright, so now I've got a build pipeline with a new task. No easy way to test it, other than... Let's see, what branch did this thing work on? Only on master, I think. This is all defaults. Alright, so let's see. If I want to test this, set your trigger. I don't have a trigger, do I? So there's that trigger. Continuous deployment trigger is enabled for which branch? Alright, so in the pipeline, I have a trigger. It's disabled. Let's turn this on. Now they match. I don't want it to be a part of a pull request, so that should be all I need, right? There's no save option. I guess maybe that is it. Alright, so that's good, that's good. Alright, so that should work. Um, if I do a new pull request, two guard clauses, or rather two smart enum. Let's rename this thing. Alright. 
If I accept a new pull request, that should work. Let's see what this is up to. 1.07 is now there. All right. Now, if I do another one, it's going to require it to rev to 1.08. So I really ought to do some useful work in there to get to justify that version update. Um, let's go back to that. See if there's anything low-hanging fruit-wise that we can take care of as part of this, just to trigger a build. Azure Pipelines failed. That was what we expected would happen, though. Um, let's see what the error was. So this is saying there was an error. Those are defined in an assembly that is not referenced. Add a reference to net standard. That seems odd. The main issue seems to be that you can't get to these message pack and other related project URLs. Which was another reason why I wanted to automate these builds, because I think for this to work, I think I need different builds for each one of these. So let's look at the solution for a minute, because maybe it's time to just bite that bullet. <clears throat> In the beginning, this was a simple project. And it had only two two projects in the solution, which were Smart Enum, this one, and Smart Enum .unit tests, this one. Later on, uh, through a series of pull requests, we ran some benchmarks on the application that were, I think, all in here. And it turned out that it was much much faster if you used an alternative way to structure this thing uh, using a couple of different approaches for how to do serialization. So uh, to that end, there are now additional projects with unit tests for each one for JSON.NET, for Message Pack, for Protobuf, for UTF JSON, UTF-8 JSON, uh, and then we also have this auto fixture stuff. Um, and so because of that, each one of these other projects may or may not be used some of the time, uh, depending on how you want to set this up, which adds a bit to the complexity of the whole the whole thing. Um, because these are optional, so my, my choice is either don't necessarily include them, in which case there might be problems when you go to use Smart Enum, uh, or you include all of them in the Smart Enum NuGet package, in which case they're all there, but they may or may not be necessary for most people, so now you're adding additional bloat to the system. <clears throat> And in any case, I wouldn't add the tests, just the, you know, the assemblies for the actual code. Uh, or you make each one of these its own separate NuGet package, and whoever wants to use the different features that each one of these might have, then can pick and choose whether or not they want to pull that one in. Now, thus far, I have not published any of these other things as separate NuGet packages. But that's the approach that seems like the one that makes the most sense. Um, and so the next step would be to basically publish out uh, you know, 1.0 version of each one of these separate projects so that someone could then pull those in um, as needed. So this thing doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, I've, and honestly, I have not even used a lot of these uh, myself. I've just seen the output from the... Uh, the benchmarks to see that yes in fact they are a lot faster when you use these. Um, Smart Enum does not have any dependencies on any of those other things so I'm not sure why honestly this thing is looking for them when I tell it to build 
just smart enum. So let's see what my build command looks like at the top of this thing. So .NET build auto fixture. Why is it trying to build auto fixture? Because it's just doing a .NET build on any and all CS proj files that it finds. That must be what its default is. And then auto fixture worked. But down here, protobuf is failing. So why? Okay, message pack. So this is .NET build on smarting a message pack. Do, do, do. Message pack tries to do its thing and has all these errors. But these errors don't occur for me when I build it. So if I go out to smart enum, which is where I'm at, and just do done a build on the whole solution, it should do roughly the same thing that the build server is doing. And I get some warnings. I should probably clear those warnings out just to make it so there's less noise in my build. But everything passes. But out here it fails. Smart Enum name formatter. No boxing conversion type for I equatable and I comparable. I comparable. Alright. And this seems to be an issue because you must reference net standard. You must add a reference to assembly net standard. Why is that? Let's ask Mr. Google. What is up with that? Alright. Lots of upvotes. Try add net standard reference in web config. I don't have a web config. So that would be great. Alright. CS Proj with reference include net standard. This was fixed in Visual Studio 15.5 years ago. It's because in 4.7.1, we no longer have support to implicitly add references, blah, 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 blah. All right, so the question is, can I just add a reference for net standard? And what will that look like? This one that someone put in here, up oh, there it is. Reference include net standard. Sure, let's try that. All right, so let's go out here. And the uh, the one that was actually failing in this case was message pack CS proj. Uh, it wasn't the only one though. It was let's see it was several of these ones. So this one failed, which was message pack. This one failed, which was protobuf. And that looks like the only two. So go to message pack here and edit CS Proj. And we'll put this in its own uh, we'll put this in its own branch here momentarily. Right, it didn't seem to have that before, so we've added it. Edit protobuf, do the same thing. See if that affects me building locally, which everything seems to work. Let's create a branch. I don't know what we're doing here.
here. I guess this is uh, fixed build. Okay. And a reference to net standard. So that built correctly, pushed correctly. Come out here and look at. Um, let's go out to my smart enum. There should be my new branch. There it is. Go look at smart enum here and look at builds. I think it should be building pull requests. Pretty sure. I haven't made a pull request yet though, so let's, let's do that. Compare and pull request, create the pull request. Okay, I don't have any branch protection set up on this, so let's do that. If we go in here under branches, we can add a rule. We can say require status checks for, and we have them be up to date. And have that and create with the name hmm, uh, master require status check. Thanks for clearing out all my choices when there's some validation error. Rule is invalid. Oh, thanks. Why is it invalid? Oh, branch name pattern. That was not what it was asking about. All right, fine. Create. All right, that's better. So I've got a master branch protection rule. If I go out to my pull request, look at this. Now the status check is in progress. Uh, we should click on details to see it. Here it is, and we should see it here as well. There it is, and let's look at it in detail. Let's do the full restore. We'll get to the build in a moment. We'll see if that fixes things. questions while this is waiting. Peanut Gallery, thanks all again for uh, for joining me today. Hopefully this is uh, helping some of you. Overall I really do like the new Azure Pipeline stuff. I especially like how easy it is to get just the the basic builds set up and running for an open source project like this one. Uh, you know, it's completely free. I think I showed in a previous stream that you can find on a YouTube archive how to set this up uh, initially. And then when you need to add additional stuff to it, like in this case, I want to be able to automatically publish to NuGet. Uh, it's not rocket science. You know, it's, it's pretty easy. I'm not uh, super familiar with, with the UI because uh, I don't do it that often. Um, so you see me stumbling around a little bit, but you know, once you kind of know the steps involved, it's it's pretty straightforward. Now, one downside to the free version that you get here uh, is that every single time you run the build, it's going to be a new VM that's like brand new from scratch, and so it's going to the builds are going to take longer than if you had a dedicated VM doing your builds, and you can get the dedicated uh, builds if you just upgrade to a paid version of Azure DevOps. In this case, I'm just paying the this two-minute tax to do a restore of everything every time, whereas, you know, then, you know, it wouldn't be uh, nearly that long if, if it had already done the restore and it only had to update things that had changed. It skipped the build. Why did it skip the build? That's interesting. 
Uh, you can also do a local agent, sure. Steve Kramer, Stephen Kramer says. Uh, Stephen Vore. Well, there's too many Steves here, aren't there? Stephen Vore says, just need to do it more often, right, Steve? Well, yeah, although the nice thing about this is when once you do it once, you don't need to do it again. <laughs> so uh, if I'm doing it all the time, then it's not doing its job of, of automating this away from me, unless I just have lots and lots of projects. And even then... Uh, like I was talking about earlier, if, if they gave me a way to pull this thing out as a YAML that I could just copy and paste into another project and tweak a few things, I'd be all over that. Okay, so the build where it said it was skipped, it was lying, uh, apparently, because here it is actually doing the build now. Um, let's see if it fails. Could not locate the assembly net standard. That doesn't sound good. If it's hard, do it more. Yes, definitely. Or automate it, which is if once you start doing it more, you realize that there's a need to automate it, which is what I'm trying to do here. All right. Um, this is progress, right? Because only one of the errors occurred, not both of them. But I thought I fixed it for both. So let's see. Build succeeded, build succeeded. Lots of warnings. I need to do something about those warnings. Missing XML comments. I don't want XML comments for those things. Um, I'm going to just turn that off somewhere. Or add some XML comments. Let's see. Build succeeded, succeeded, succeeded. There we go. Build failed. So, protobufnet. Yeah, they do need to settle down on a name, don't they? And Azure DevOps is not the best of names. Especially when you have teams that have DevOps as the team name or as the role name or whatever. Like the brand extension of the term DevOps is just insane. So you're saying Bamboo is not good compared to VSTS pipelines, DevOps, whatever they're calling it? I wish they had a code name for it, then we could just call it the code name. I'm sure they probably did, but I don't know what it is. Personally, I've always been a huge fan of uh, Team City. Team City is, is my jam. It, it works great. I could set all this stuff up in no time in Team City. But it's not f as quick and easy and free to just add to any GitHub project. So that's why I'm, I'm doing more with Azure DevOps. And most enterprise companies are pretty much buying into Azure these days. So most of the clients that I work with for architect uh, review type jobs or... or architecting, you know, enterprise software, they're probably already using Azure. They're probably already using TFS or moving to Azure DevOps. Uh, and so it makes sense for me to, to use that. Okay, so anyway. This is saying it can't find assembly net standard. This is in smartenum.protobuf.net. I thought I did that one, but let's go look. Uh, this is definitely doing build protobuf net. There's smart enum. There's protobuf net. There's the thing. It says to reference net standard. That was supposed to be my fix. And it worked for one of them. But not the other one. And here's why. Could not resolve this reference. Could not locate assembly net standard. Okay. Having an issue. Hey, look, it's the in-house bamboo server. Haha. <laughs> Dave Glick had this problem. I know Dave Glick. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Adding the net standard library net framework package solves the issue. Do the VS build tools not have the proper tooling? .NET Core build tools. You should never use this package. It's deprecated. In VS 2017, you need 15.3. 
done it core SDK workload installed. Okay, what do I need on Azure DevOps? That's what I want to know. It's working fine for me locally. Okay, fix this. Da, da, da. Okay, do that. I did that already. So apparently I need to do something to install Knit Core build tools as part of CI CD pipeline. Why do I have to do that? Probably a way to do this in the YAML file, right? Try looking for a tool installer task. Alright, well let's edit this. Here's my build. Can I edit this in a non YAML way? I don't know that I can. So Azure Pipeline YAML to do what? Install an SDK? That, thanks Steven T. Kramer, it looks like what I just got. Okay, so if we grab this and paste it in here. I 
guess I want the uh, package type to be SDK. And I guess I want the version to be... who knows. <clears throat> um, to install... the latest. So is 221 going to work? Download. Done of course DK. 22105 maybe? what that does. Two two one has to be there already. Well you would think. Let's see if we can run our build. This problem only started here, like here it worked fine. So, whatever I did in this check in here seems to be what caused the problem to start happening. And all I did with that was change my YAML file to use the YAML file that the other one had. So, uh, to use the guard clauses YAML file. So maybe something in that guard clauses YAML file is really the issue. But it blows up right here after doing an explicit restore. And what I had before under Smart Enum we view the history those are both new was just this, and it didn't have a separate restore step. I just said build it. So somehow that restore might be the problem, if I get rid of the restore. Or it could be that the agent is, like uh, THL Next is saying, could be the agent slow. But again, it worked until I changed from this one to the other one. So we shall see. All right, so we got this task. I don't need that. Let's look at how this is going. Denicore installer was successful. I didn't add too much time, 15 seconds to my build. Store is so slow. This is why I can walk on a treadmill while I work because I'm not actually doing anything when I'm just sitting here watching the screen scroll through for this restore. So weird. 
It says it's skipped, but I know it's not skipped because it's actually running it. That's got to be a bug. Come on, show me. There it goes. And it failed. Alright, so the adding the .NET Core installer did not help. I wonder if I just get rid of the restore if it'll fix it. Message pack. I got that one working previously. It's saying it can't find net standard. Protobuf. That unit test. That one works. Alright. So let's get rid of the restore. See what that does. Because, like I said, it was working without it. Do control KC, I know. So let's comment everything out. All right, we're just gonna build. Missing property. Do I need to? Kill the white space? Why is this thing green? Well, hopefully it's an error. And let's run it. And it should be faster. Now the other thing I can do, potentially, is create separate pipelines for Smart Enum from those other related projects, because those other projects don't really have to be part of the core Smart Enum build. Uh, they're not even getting packaged up and deployed to NuGet at the moment, so they're they're breaking this build, but they aren't. They don't need to be. Uh, so if I split them out, put them in their own solution, call it something like serializers or something like that, uh, that will make this build faster, make this build less brittle, and should make it so that those things can be dealt with as a separate thing. They'll still be in the repo, but they'll have their own solution, they'll have their own build pipeline, they'll have their own package publication uh, process that we'll use to get them to NuGet. So by getting rid of the explicit restore, doing a build is causing it to do a restore. So it's installing everything it needs here. And maybe somehow that's going to be better than doing it explicitly. I don't know why it should be any different, but we'll see. questions or other things you want to talk about? Steven Kramer has forgotten what the error is at this point. Yeah, the issue is that it keeps saying it can't find net standard. It can't find I equatable or I comparable uh, for these these projects that are uh, related. They're not even the main project. 
Then there's the... I think that might have been the air. You might still be getting it. And again, these things only started happening with changes I just made today. I don't know, that was just warnings. No errors. So the question is, what did I change that's causing net standard to suddenly be a problem? If the error happens again, I'll copy-paste it into the chat, just so you all can see it, and help out by googling for it if you want. It's weird that it's installing RC packages, RC2, 24027. I'm not sure why this stuff isn't only release versions of things. On the topic of tests, how do you call tests that check your DI container auto registrations? What would I call those tests, or how do I execute those tests? I'm not sure what you mean by how do you call. And the short answer is going to be I don't test that usually, um, or at least I don't test it directly uh, as a, a separate test. You know that'll get tested when I do integration tests. Um, so how do I categorize them? I would say those are just part of my integration or functional test suite. So when I run tests against the uh, the system and it's configured as it should be, and there's the error that's still happening. Hmm. Anyway, when I run the integration or functional tests, uh, it will use the things that my container is, is telling it to use, uh, and it will verify that those things all work or that they don't. All right, so getting rid of the restore didn't fix it. The error is... is what? Where was the error? Hello David C, welcome. We're trying to figure out why we're getting some crazy problem with this stuff. Here's my error. So this error suddenly started happening after I made updates to my Azure pipeline. And it worked before, theoretically. Build failed. But these work just fine on my local machine. So when I build these locally, they work fine. When I try and build them out on an Azure build agent using VS 2017, and even if I install the latest .NET Core, they still fail. So why, why does this thing fail? I'll tell it to use Windows with 2019. That seems probably not a good idea because that's still not released yet. I don't think. Does the branch build on someone else's machine? Well, let's see. It should. How about, you know, any one of you can pull this thing down. Um, you guys, you tell me. Does it build for you? your clone. Alright, Stephen T. Kramer, you get an issue with it too. It's interesting. Do you get the same error? The name 
team space. Yeah, I don't get that air. Mine succeeds just with. Uh... Oh, no, interesting. I got a warning. Could not resolve, could not locate net standard. So I get a warning on mine that turns into a error on the build server, it seems like. Uh, I'm not on master right now, but I could be. But yes, do master. Right. So when I build on master, Interestingly enough, I don't even get that error as a warning. I don't get that output about needing that standard. At least I don't see it. Is it there? There's a message pack one. Well, these are all just separate warnings. Nothing here about net standard. Bunch of stuff about system exception not being thrown. familiar with that rule anyway. There was a separate rule that said don't throw application exception, but this uh, smart enum apparently is just throwing system exception from some places. I could probably clean that up. Alright, time to diff the branches with git lens. <laughs> I get 17 warnings, which I can probably clean up pretty quickly. But in my other branch, which I can't remember the name of, fix build. Uh, yeah, it's on remote. So in our Dallas slash fix build, I'm getting some problems. Hmm. But even in the main branch on uh, on the build server, it's failing to build the main branch on master. So it's not just that. So I get 23 warnings on this one, including warnings about net standard, which probably only occurred because I added those things to my CSProj, thinking they might help. All right, so if we go here and we get rid of that, since it didn't end up helping anyway, and we get rid of it here as well, and we'll just build Visual Studio, and we'll play count the warning list. Error list, 24 warnings. None of them are anything to do with... Yeah, most of them are just missing XML comments. So 
So I can suppress this, so I can let's see. This is really an argument out of range exception for t value. So if we change this to argument out of range exception, string parameter name becomes name of value. Program name message. That works. I think I want to do the same thing here. That takes care of those. And now we're down to four warnings because of that. Because that's interesting. Now it has to be type of. It's not exactly an argument anymore, but it still gets us past the warning. All right, so now let's look at our error list. 11 warnings. So can I do this outside of a static constructor? I don't think I can. So I think we'll just suppress it. If I didn't have the if statement, I think I could do it, but... how you can fix three things and like all the warnings go. Alright, so Steven Kramer, yours is working. Um, I wonder, let's see, I wonder if you'll have any better luck with my, our Dallas fix build branch. So that's there. So now let's go back out to here and here's my pull request. Fixing build warnigans. Let's look at the details for this build. Uh, we should update the branch. Do that. And then I can do a git pull here. Since I just updated the branch. Let's see what a local build does here. Why are you still giving me warnings when I don't get warnings in Visual Studio?
probably not getting warnings because it's not actually doing the builds. Because it's seeing that they're up to date. Right, right. 54 warnings. Great. Okay. So this should be argument out of range exception. That and do the same thing. <laughs> Hello, face center. All right, so Forty-nine warnings. That's why I was getting rid of so many of these. It was because it wasn't rebuilding everything. All right, let's continue just ignoring these. We'll suppress them in the source code. No, no, no. It's not what I want. Give me the suppression. There we go. Okay, we have to rebuild to actually see all the warnings. Missing XML comments. David C. New fix one builds for me locally with some warnings using 221. Okay, that's all good. What's my build doing out here? All checks have failed. Details. Build failed. Tell me more. It's going to be the same problem. It's going to say, boom, could not find net standard. So the only thing different might be that it's in release mode or what version that it's doing. This is build engine 15.9.20 for .NET Core. which is perhaps full full framework build, but I mean, it's still running .NET to DXE. Does this thing tell me anything about its version when it starts? Sure. .NET Core version 2.149.0 I don't know what that's the version of .NET, the EXE. Totally works on my machine. All right, let's keep cleaning up warnings. The only thing left is missing XML comments, which seems like a waste of time to fix, but it's easy, so let's just knock these things out so they're not adding noise.
want some on classes too. You can script YAML and just add .NET dash dash version. So it'll tell me what its version is. That's not a bad idea. One morning. I have to have more warnings than that. I know I didn't fix them all. I can see the warnings flying by right here. So why are they not here? Visual Studio, you are annoying me. do that release build thing. Dash configuration, dash dash configuration release. All right. Missing XML comment. Let's see, this is already in release mode here. It won't show me these things. So can read, can write, both once. XML comments. I feel like that's unnecessary. Read JSON, write JSON. These are in a few different places. This doesn't give me a count of warnings, but I, I do think they're getting smaller. When in doubt, clean. Yeah, I've done that. And on the build server, it's starting from a brand new build server instance, so... It's starting out as clean as can be. Alright, 
Do any more warnings? A few. A few more stupid warnings. No, that's all done. Airless shows one warning. I don't know if that's being used or not. It's coming it out for now and see what happens. It doesn't look like it's being used. So he is providing three, so that's just a bogus warning. So let's try that again. Oh, you meant clean up the warnings. Yeah, that's part of my thought too, is they're just adding to the noise. And some of them are apparently turning into errors on the build server. Alright, so this is not really an error. Is there some way for me to suppress that error? Suppress. still seeing missing XML comment crap in here. But it has an XML comment. Is it seeing that I don't have one? Return the instance. Tell me this thing's not smart enough to require actual XML comments in my comments. That's going to annoy me. Value resolver fifteen thirty four fifteen forty six. You're just not taking me to the right line. That's it. So get formatter of T. That's this one. And it has one. So why are you seeing it doesn't? Theoretically, this has cleaned up some things. Let's see what this looks like. And this still has a bunch of XML comment junk. 74 warnings. So in Smart Eats, Linum, UTF-8, JSON, why is this referencing the project file? Value resolver, get formatter T. Alright, well, it's true, this one has no XML comments. See if seventy four warnings goes down. It did sixty nine warnings. But now it's complaining something's being used by another process. 
Right, we're going to commit what we've got. Okay. So this builds okay locally, just has some warnings. Probably still going to fail out here. The suggestion to spit out the version is a good one. What's that look like? Uh, .NET dash dash version, that should be easy. Let's add that to my solution so we can edit it here easily. So I'm going to add an existing item. Existing item is going to be um, oh, hey, let's add the editor config too while we're at it. Add that. Uh, we're going to add the other existing item. Is our Azure Pipeline YAML. And for that, I can just do what is the syntax for that? Is that just script here? Let's just give, oh, there is an example. Alright, so that looks like it'll do it, like you said. So we'll save this and commit it. that. I should be able to look at my builds. Let's follow this one. Which already failed. Well, parsing a block mapping did not find expected key. Right, so clearly I didn't get that quite right. dash space script colon. I think, I think that's the syntax I'm missing. I don't have a dash. You still don't like it.
Oh, I didn't get to it yet. Dash script colon dot net space dash dash version. Hey Ganesh, how's it going? That looks right, doesn't it? I think it's this build that's running. Yeah, show.net version succeeded. 22104. Alright, that should be fine. So why, with 22104 installed, is it getting a stupid net standard error? These are the things that slow me down when I'm otherwise being productive. I'm about ready to just pull those projects out of the solution because they aren't really related. And I'll create a separate solution and a separate build pipeline for them. So if this doesn't magically start working, I think that's what I will do. In which case, I'll probably need to tell the basic build which solution to run, because otherwise it probably just grabs start at solution or something. Not sure how it picks the right solution. Or it just runs all the CSProj files, which, come to think of it, I think that's what it does. So I'll have to tell it to run my solution. I wonder if that might be related to the issue. If it's doing a build of star star slash star dot CSProj, will that give it a different behavior than if I just say dot net build smartenum dot SLN? Still a lot of missing XML comments. Why does I have to install these things so many times? This could be so much faster. I need a dedicated build machine for this. What if I could do that just temporarily, like, while I'm trying to diagnose this issue, give me a dedicated build machine, and then, after that, I don't need it. Yeah, but how do I tell it to use a local agent? As it stands right now, are you just saying, uh, configure an Azure DevOps local agent? I was thinking you meant, like, tell it to use my local, my actual local machine. Okay, so is there a way for me to tell Azure DevOps to use my actual local machine? Because right now it has no idea my local machine exists. All it knows is that something got committed to GitHub. Okay. I have not set that up before. There must be some way to do it that I'm not aware of. Alright. So, still getting errors. There's the error. It's still the same. The type is defined in assembly, net standard that is not referenced. And that's coming in from protobufnet.
Can I run the YAML file locally? That would be even better, right? Instead of using my own machine. The problem that I see with using a local agent, though, is that if it's working on my machine, won't it work on the local agent? And if it works on the local agent, then that doesn't help me diagnose why it doesn't work on this VM image. Right? So I kind of want is like a dedicated version of this VM image that Azure DevOps is giving me so that I can see what's going on there. All right, so this is star star slash star CS proj, which I could change to say only build a certain solution or a certain list of projects. Pretty sure if I tell it to just do smart enum, that it'll be fine. So let's try that for now. This will be just that one project. Smart unit, dot unit tests. And if that's a regex, it's probably going to bork at that, but we'll see. So we'll try that little change, and it should speed up the build significantly if it works. Build test smart enum project. Settings, agent pools. I'm still not sure why this thing is installing all this beta stuff. I don't believe I've told it anywhere that I want beta versions of things. Build succeeded. Woohoo! Alright, so when I tell it not to do everything... Alright, why did it skip these though? That's fine. Didn't find anything to do. Result was false. Right, so if it's not a pull request, then I'm not going to publish it. Cool. Yeah, being able to test these YAML files with a local Docker thing would be cool. I can run Docker on this machine, so that would be fine. 
Okay, so this all passed, which means I can go out to my pull request on the proper project. So on smart unit, I have a pull request. It's got a green check mark, which means I can merge it. No longer actually doing the thing it says it's doing, but that's fine. Merge this in. Delete the branch. Go check out master. Pull the new stuff down. Alright, now that should trigger a build on the main branch. While I'm at it, I should fix the YAML file for the test. Manage organization agent pools. So this is what we're saying I would do is download an agent here and tell it to use my own local agent, which I could do. So I'll make a note to do that next. Meanwhile, Let's fix the uh, the YAML file. This is the master, and I just want this to be uh, smart unum dot unit tests. We called it All right smart unum dot unit tests. There, that should do it. Save that. That should trigger another build. And this one should actually have tests that pass. I didn't even get to the clean architecture stuff I wanted to do today. So I'll have to push that off till another time. I did at least get a new version of Smart Enum pushed out to NuGet, so there's that. Anybody download it yet? Nope. Let's see if the test runs. Taking a while is a good sign, I guess. Guessing this logger command is making it so I'm not seeing anything out of the console. I 
Are you guys all using Visual Studio 2019 yet? Should be seeing a new, like, RTM version of it. Like, what, next week? Isn't that when all the launch parties are set? Test run. Well, what, now you're going to start test execution? You've been running for two minutes. What have you been doing? Oh, building. Okay. Why did you do a full rebuild for two minutes when I already built the thing in 44 seconds? There's a flag on .NET test that tells it not to rebuild. I think I need to set that thing. No build, no restore. I think I need those. Because that was just slow. Everything worked. Nice. Yep, April 2nd, I believe. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, to just skip the build step entirely and just run the test step, which does the build. Maybe I'll do that. My build step's probably not doing much for me. Standalone. So this is master now. So, theoretically, if I just comment this out, control KC doesn't work though, <laughs> it feels wrong, yeah. Uh, Steven Kramer's got a good point. My artifacts that I want here won't work if I do that. Oops. Command, test, arguments. So I think I can just do it here. Dash, dash. What did I say it was? No dash build. Okay, now I do need the build of that. So can I do that? Can I do a space separated thing there? I wonder. I really need to build just those two projects. So let's see. Alright, so YAML must be doing something with the star star thing for me. Try just committing it. Half your versions are used up. What do you mean, version? You mean half the time you check into GitHub or because of this? I believe it. Try this, try new build, try this, try new build.
Attitude specified. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So no, it doesn't work. Um, hmm. Exactly. It's annoying. Pretty sure I can just explicitly specify the two projects. So instead of the star star thing, I can say what folder am I starting in? Source probably. So if I do source slash that, and source slash that, and if I look at my structure, one's going to be in yeah. All right, so I need. that like that You think they're semicolon separated? Okay, you win. Not sure what it was trying to open. One more time. That failed. Let's see if this one works. Randomly trying stuff on Azure DevOps as a service. Boom. Still fails. What did you actually create as a command? You're not even going to show me. You won't even tell me what the command is that it tried to run. Yeah. Yeah, my agent picks up really quick. I've got a special relationship with this agent. Projects. Correct. Do I have to do them one by one as separate build tasks? I could. That would be annoying. But maybe that's the answer. This doesn't seem helpful. But let's just try that. Let's just do two builds. Because, you know, the other thing I don't care about is for the test project, I don't really care about this artifact staging directory. So let's get rid of, let's see, let's copy this task. And 
we'll do another build. And we know that that worked. And really that was fine to be star star slash. Like that. And this became star star slash unit tests. But I don't care about the output necessarily. Or if I well, I care about the output for the tests, but not for the build. So the display name is build smart enum. And this is build smart enum unit tests. And then we're going to run the tests and do all the other things. All right? All right. That's what Steven is suggesting I do as well. So, it must be right. Do, do, do. Maybe this will work. Every time I do this, I think it could be the last one. Yeah, but David, that's still going to build every project. I need to build exactly two projects. It's so anything that's going to do a star CS proj. I suppose I could do the smart enum star CS proj and the Maya star enum unit test star CS proj. I can't read that though. Like, is the only difference the fact that you started with a pipe character? It says projects colon pipe that space that arguments colon. So the pipe prefix is the thing? Because that's the only thing I'm seeing that's different. Pretty sure I told the unit test thing not to do a restore and not to do a build, and yet it's still doing that. Oh, no, that was my build. Haha, <laughs> that's allowed. Okay, so on the test, it should skip it, and it is. Alright, good. There's my no build and my no restore. So I spent a minute and a half on builds that I did not have to repeat on during the test. Okay, so doing it as separate build things works. It's not quite as maintainable if later on I add more projects that I want it to automatically build, but in this case I really only want it to build those two things. So I think having it as two separate build tasks is sufficient. Um, okay, and, and it's good to know, David, that if we add a pipe, then they're basically separated one per line. It's kind of weird that the YAML uses line return separators, but it is space, white space sensitive, so I guess that's how it rolls. Alright, I'm going to declare victory here on this particular thing, uh, I think, and say that that's working. And if we got to GitHub Smart Enum. We should see all greens across the board here, which we do. 
it's now version 107. It now automatically deploys to NuGet, which I didn't actually demonstrate, but it is showing up all green that it's working. So um, I think it's working. So there you go. Success. I will, uh, yeah, I think the auto deploy to NuGet works. I can't easily test it until I rev it to a new version. Um, but I'll try and do that sometime in the next few days and verify it. But I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's doing the exact same thing as the other guard clauses one, and I know that one works. So let's uh, let's see who else is online. We'll do a, a quick uh, raid on on somebody else. Anybody have any recommendations? Ed Charbonneau is live doing stuff on Blazor. I think that sounds good. Let's send you over to Ed. He's got 19 people already on there. So again, thanks you all for uh, your help today. I hope you uh, learned something, got something out of this. And I will talk to you all next week, if not sooner. I might do a couple streams between now and next Friday. All right, let's head over to Ed's uh, Blazor talk. Learn some more stuff about Blazor. Ready to raid in three, two, one. Raid now.